Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Look at the failure rates at grade 7 and grade 9 and even grade 4 from the time that UPND came into office. The failure rates have astronomically gone up. Why? It's because first of all people don't have access to cheap affordable transport. So, ngatumayangana life pamene Afrika muno, Muzambia, pamene Afrika life. Yangana ni mtengo wa fuel, pamene wa Afrika, 30 kwa cha perita. Wa taxi, kuta kwa nise cashing. Afu nko ugula marita ziangati Waya ango kuta kwa nishe kashini Afu nko ugula marita ziangati Mufakepo bus driver Afu nko ugula marita ziangati kuta kwa nishe kashini Pede <coughs> Mutengo Wavi nduenda pa mwamba But Masala di yawa antusia fendera Veni kwa cha ii yawa sami Kwa cha ii yawa sami Ilibe profit ilionze Ija hundred kwacha manje inasanduka ni 20 kwacha because olo tenga hundred kwacha uende kazai mai kwa zimai market kumtendere utenga hundred kwacha uende nayo mtown tun from noza gula mula hundred kwacha uzafunga kumanja cuz ijindalama hii yaba kainde sami chilema ili be profit ya sida value if you look at the exchange rate it's now running to 24 kwacha per dollar Mm. And the eight they promised us that once they form government, the exchange rate will go down to ten kwacha per dollar. When I could use a cut few wero to zambo gulaya twelve kwacha. When I pay a few wero seventeen kwacha, manja few wero iri pathetic kwacha. Ten tiangani che bo ma yala ka inde. Ministry by ministry. Tell me, ministry yala ka inde amene chita kobuino. Kulibe. Ten tiangani ku minister of health. Nima vuto. Ma hospital. Mubi patala. Mulipe mangwala. Pano ni pafupi maningi na palevi mwanawasa hospital. Ngati mwaenda manje palevi mwanawasa hospital. Muzambi la chufundo. Wodu wala wantu walipa maflo. Bankala pans. Wotensha wantu walipa maflo. Bankala pans. Mulipe mangwala. Mubi patala. Now, if UTH. Ngati levi mwanawasa hospital. Ngati ndola general hospital. Kitwe general hospital. They don't have drugs. Think about the situation in Mapatija. Think about how dire the situation is in Wengwa, where the president comes from. Mukaenda pa Wengwa Wengwa clinic lero pa mene pachoka waka inde sami chidema. Paripe mangwala. Mkuu na pachoka president. Mwende kujia kushantumbu road kwa mwende wa inda wa prezi kwa mwende wa chokwa president kwa mwende wa nkala. Pa hospital kwa clinic hili kushantumbu road kulipe mangwala. A president wa pita pa mene paja kwa wa pita pa clinic palipi mangwala. So when you are dealing with a government that has failed to deliver on its own promises. When you are dealing with a government that has failed to solve problems. This is what you see. They become very desperate. They become scared. Because they have lost the confidence and the trust of the Zambian masses. So now the only way to survive is to use the police. To abuse the police. To abuse the court system. Is now to use the law to arrest people. Use the law to stop people from talking. Use the law to stop people from demonstrating. Use the law to stop people from expressing themselves. And this is exactly what they are doing. But you see, we have waited for them. They are not the first government. Zambia has had number of Zambia has had a number of governments. They have tried in the past to use the police. It has not worked. All governments that have come before have tried this formula. It doesn't work. And even in UPND, it will not work. Because if you talk about the police, the police are men, the police. Salary of police. Nangongole zamele nazo kapogwa. Salary of teacher. Nangongole zamele nazo teacher. Salary of nurse. Nangongole zamele nazo nurse. And there are impact ya economy. So la buera kapokola kubwa kukuguida. Bama kamba, mwanza, nishito chape. 
Otherwise, it is you are very much was. But Muziba, very much in cheat. Tichit Ravana soup. We have to go ahead and even arrest you, even if we don't agree with these with these orders. All right, so everybody is affected. Let's briefly talk, talk, talk yeah. about uh, the cost of living that you touched on, uh, Mr. Wanza. I don't mean to interrupt you, mm. but uh, of course you talked about uh, the cost of living. And we've seen government putting in place certain measures. One of them is uh, obviously the introduction of the Zambia National Service. Ego's brand being introduced on the market, especially in one of the leading uh, chain stores. Don't you think that is one way of cushioning the millimil, the high millimil prices on the market, isn't that commendable? Mm -hmm. First of all, <coughs> I come from Eastern Province, comrade. So we say umani na chati tsaza e poting jovi choke mnyanga. We need to tackle the fundamental questions why the cost of living is ever going up. Yeah. And I think government must tackle those fundamental factors that are causing the cost of living to go up. Yeah. If government doesn't deal with those fundamental factors, these piecemeal and knee-jerk reaction of trying to get the Ungawaku ZNS will not work. Mm. Okay. What has triggered the high cost of living is a number of issues, and we expect that government must address these issues. Number one is the high cost of production, mm -hmm. which has been triggered by the high cost of fuel which is one of the major fundamentals in as far as price control is concerned. If you fail to deal with Ndengwa fuel, it doesn't matter who you are, you cannot deal with the cost of living. Because the cost of living is tied to the cost of production. The cost of production is tied to the cost of fuel. Why is the cost of fuel so high? There are two factors. One is how government is managing the entire sector. The second one is what happens at the international market? We all know Zambia does not produce fuel. Mm. So, and secondly, we know that fuel prices at the international market go up or down depending on what is happening. And we know that we have no control of what is happening at the international market. Exactly. But we have got control of what happens here at home. Mm. So any responsible government, and this is what we are saying as Socialist Party, any responsible government, the first thing that they need to do on the issues of fuel is one, to subsidize the cost of fuel. Because we have no control over the prices at the international market, but we have control over how much we can peg the price locally here. But an argument will be raised. No, I'm coming. I'm coming to subsidies. I know that they are going to argue where is the money going to come from. Exactly. And, I, and we will tell them where the money is coming from. Mm -hmm. So if we subsidize fuel, that's number one. Mm -hmm. And these subsidies can be both direct and indirect subsidies. Mm -hmm. A direct subsidy is what government pays directly to subsidize the, the a service mm -hmm. or a commodity. Mm -hmm. An indirect subsidy is what government gives in terms of tax waiver. Mm -hmm. So fuel, if government can immediately waive off the value added tax, remove that on all fuel products, mm -hmm. immediately fuel prices will go down by 16%. Effective the moment government announces that we have suspended the payment of VAT on fuel products. Mm -hmm the way the previous government did. Number two, they can remove exercise duty, which is about 8% on all fuel products. If you put 16% plus 8%, you are going to have 24% cut off. Mm. So immediately government waves off tax, VAT and excise duty on petroleum products, the fuel cost will go down automatically by 24%. Okay. Now, what, what impact will that have yeah. on the economy if so, you get to, you know, reduce um, or rather subsidize fuel mm -hmm. as well as remove those percentages mm -hmm. that you just mentioned there? Yeah. So, this is an indirect subsidy. Mm -hmm. If government says we don't have money, mm -hmm. this is an indirect subsidy. So, they can immediately reduce the fuel prices by 24% just by waving off the tax mm -hmm. on all petroleum products. That's number one. Number two, they can pay a direct subsidy and further reduce the cost of fuel to be beyond 24%. Uh -huh. Number three, when you know that you don't produce fuel and you know you have no control over the fuel prices at the international market, any responsible government would think of having long-term contracts with the suppliers of fuel. Mm. So government can go into long-term contracts with the suppliers of fuel. Like the and peg, it, yes, the future market, and mm. peg it at a certain price mm. and cap it. Okay, sorry about that. And cap it. Mm -hmm. 
so they can have long term fuel contracts and peg the price at a constant so it doesn't matter what happens at the international market whether the prices go up or they go down it will have no effect on the future market and the future earnings that's what government can do number four which is the last point on this issue is that government should be thinking of constructing fuel reserves centers and stock centers where they can stock fuel mm -hmm. okay now the question comes where is government going to get the money yeah because i was coming to the issue of future markets you know that they'll raise up an argument to say we've got no capacity you know to stock up fuel if we would get into the future markets kind of situation so i'm thinking okay we need a uh, storage facility here yes. so and where is the money going to come yeah. from so where is the money going to come from first for future markets it can be done in two, two ways government as socialist party we say government immediately has to stop this price reviews of every 30 days it distorts the market it becomes very difficult for people to plan it becomes very difficult for people to effect their plans uh -huh. so they need to stop the reviewing of prices on a monthly basis they should revert back to reviewing fuel prices every three months that helps the businesses to plan it helps people to plan uh -huh. how they are going to spend their money and how they are going to survive in the next 90 days and for future markets, you can do it in two ways. Mm -hmm. There are long-term future market agreements where government can go into agreements for six months mm -hmm. and lock the prices. Mm -hmm. But as we are doing so, government must invest in building storage facilities. That can take us the next six months to one year. Mm -hmm. These are medium-term things that government can do. The question is, where is the money coming from? Here's where the money is coming from. Let me start with lithium. Mm -hmm. Zambia has got battery grade lithium, as we are speaking right now. A ton of lithium battery grade is 38,000 US dollars. Today, today is Wednesday, 29th. Uh -huh. A ton of lithium is 38,000 dollars per month, per, per ton. Okay? okay? What is government doing about the lithium? Now, they have gone into a contract with Americans. They have gone into a contract and sold off your lithium. This is money which is being taken away from Zambia. Naba goleka. Today dinga naba punka naba goleka naba shitisha lithium. We are losing thirty-eight thousand dollars per ton of lithium. Imagine if that money was to come to Zambia. How much money would this government realize? That's the money you can take and subsidize fuel. Number two, surge light. But surge light by UPND, a lot of their members, senior members, have been accused of being involved in the illegal mining of surge light. How much, how many millions are we losing from illegal mining of surge light by UPND cadres and their leaders? If that money was to come into circulation, come into the economy, Number three, copper. Comrade, Zambia is the second largest producer of copper in Africa. The third largest producer of copper in the world. This government has given tax holidays to mining conglomerates. I was very annoyed two weeks ago when I heard the Zambia Revenue Authority confirming what we have been saying as socialist party all along that these mines are not paying taxes and the zambia revenue authority bazedara a came out to agree with socialist party that yes actually kcm and mopani sibari pira ma tax yeah. how much money is kcm and mopani making they are making millions of us dollars every month and we've been told by ZRA that they don't pay tax. And we have a government and a president who pretends that he cares about this country. And you have foreign international companies making billions of US dollars and they don't pay tax. Today, if this radio station, Lusaka Radio, doesn't pay its tax, my Loba ZRA will be running Karata and they will suspend your operation license, your operating license. But for huge foreign companies, they are not paying taxes. So now ZRA is agreeing with us that my mind they're not paying taxes. On top of that, they've been given tax holidays. Mm. You know how much money Zambia is losing 
we are losing a minimum of 3.8 billion US dollars. I want Zambians to hear that. Again, 3.8 billion US dollars every year that we are losing from the mining sector alone through non-payment of tax, through tax avoidance, through externalization of profits, through other illegal, illicit financial flaws. The $3.8 billion we are losing every year, that is money which we need to use to subsidize fuel. That's the money we need to use to subsidize education in Enchokapa University of Zambia. Pamineti kamba pano, bo mayakangi wa kupasa ma bazaris, ma scholarships, kulibana wapa University of Zambia, kulibana wapa CBU, kulibana wapa kumurungushi, kulibana wapa palavana university. They are failing to provide scholarships because bo mayakamba tilibenda lama. But we are losing billions of dollars from the mining sector alone because this government has given the mining sector tax holidays. While small businesses, wamu Zambia, muvu tikana, Ka shop um north mid in gatuna ka shop four five but north mid. Uh -huh. three thousand eight hundred kukanso. Iyo you don't even talk about other charges. Malaiti, rent, manzi, na toilet ku using a uripira. How much money do our young sisters, young brothers, entrepreneurs at North Mid Market, how much do they spend every year, every month, every week to service to my shop to our? And yet government is not looking at giving them tax holidays, is not looking at giving them tax breaks. They are not looking at giving them tax incentives. Our own local businesses, no one is being given tax holidays. Why Bazungu? Why my foreigners? Okay, just it's because on. we are dealing with a government that does not care about the local people. Ti dealing an aboma ya mene ni boma ya bazungu. I boma ya waka inde ni boma ya bazungu. Si boma ya imu muli pa North Mid pa ma shop. Si boma ya ni imu mene muli pa kazimai market. Si boma ya zimai ya mene avutika kutandavale market. I boma ni ya bazungu. Bazungu ba na ma tax holiday. Bazungu si walipila tax. Bazungu si walipila Pira vili vonse, wabu era muno, vaimba godi, vaimba sujiraiti, vaimba lithiamu, vaimba emarodi, vonse vatenga for free, they don't pay a single tax. Mm -hmm. Emerald, I just went to the cadaster office the other week. We have 500 companies that have applied for licenses, for certificates of, to operate in the Emerald business. Only eight have been given. And out of eight, vonse, Ni foreign companies. Ma blacky kulibi. So we are dealing with a government that is only catering for foreigners. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.